Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Alex McPherson. Like they said, I, work at, I worked at NOAA this summer, working in the aerosols division. Um, so the data set that I was working on this summer uh, was specifically at a Hawaiian island, Mauna Loa, which is a famous island for study, uh, especially for NOAA. Famous Keeling curve came from there. What I was interested in studying uh, was basically there hasn't been an updated study from NOAA on Mauna Loa for aerosols in quite some time. Um, so basically we dug into the data and one of the things that we were looking at were looking at variables specifically with different aerosol measurements uh, and related to functions of wind direction and wind speed. The skipping thing? Oh, okay, shows you the next one. Um, so at Mauna Loa, uh, NOAA has several instruments for measuring aerosols. This big tall guy is called a nephilometer. Um, and was one that actually I got the fortunate pleasure of actually seeing broken apart and put back together. Uh, and it measures uh, the different amount of particles and their scattering effect, optical scattering effect at different bandwidths of light. Um, another instrument that we use for measuring are, is the PSAP. And that measures absorption. And absorption is really important also for aerosols because it can have uh, a heating effect. And that was another big part of this is we want to see are there changes over this historical data set in, in terms of are there climate changes? And at Mauna Loa, it's a background site, so we want to see what is the Earth's lower troposphere background aerosols. So measuring things like absorption or scattering are really important because that could show different changes over time uh, in climate effects, or it might not. Um, another thing that we use is a particle counter. We also, they also filter different sizes of particles. For the data that I was using, uh, we actually took um, one hour average intervals, even though this switches every six minutes. Um, we took average intervals, which will include all particles, and we took off the filter for between the change. So all particles were included. Uh, and as I mentioned, we were using all those different variables as a function of wind direction and wind speed. So at Mauna Loa, it's important that we've, in, or in the past, NOAA has understood um, basically two major trends that show the background aerosol data that are big indicators of when they're getting what they would say contaminant data or data that is what we would call free troposphere or clean free troposphere um, data. And so they've broken it to kind of help them indicate when they're getting contaminant, uh, but basically where the wind is coming from. And in historically, uh, we've used, they've used the northern sector, so what this would be 270 to 0 and 0 to 90, and that's considered what they would say winds that are coming from upslope because the observatory is at 10,000 feet, so the winds would come from lower elevations at the heating of the day uh, and bring aerosols from lower places that could be sources from biogenic, anthropogenic, or even marine, marine boundary uh, aerosols. So when you're getting those aerosols coming in from those elevations, you know you're probably getting something that may be contaminant. Um, and I'll also explain later why this is also considered an upslope and why uh, there will be future research or future uh, exploration into this sector because this is technically an upslope coming from what we would say is this downslope sector. So the downslope is when the, during the cooler parts of the day you have winds blowing down past the observatory and are more indicative of free troposphere air. Um, so one of the neat things that we got to use with this R software is you get to see this hourly averages of all the wind at all times. This is what you're seeing in this plot. Uh, what you see in the top one is you have a lot of wind coming out of the southeast sector with greater magnitude. Um, and same with the southwest, you have high magnitude winds. In comparison to uh, the other upslope boundary, you have what we would say lower winds with less frequency of those winds coming. And you see it's a Cartesian plot and it's a percentile, so you have 5% is that it's kind of difficult to see, but it's this outer ring. Um, but a lot of the wind comes from, like we said, the, the south, the southern quadrants. And I, on the bottom here, I have shown that you have this, this change over the across the different hours. So you have downslope to start, and then as the day heats up, the island gathers uh, energy from the sun. You also have the, the wind now changing direction, coming from more of an upslope, possibly bringing contaminant aerosols from lower elevations. Uh, as I mentioned, we studied other sorts of uh, aerosol measurements besides wind direction and wind speed. And so right here you see uh, a climatology of the scattering coefficient. Um, and you can see that the red boxes in the top left graph 
are showing the mean. It's a box plot, but the red diamond shows the mean. And it follows the trend that, yeah, as the day, as the upslope winds come from those lower, lower elevations, we're seeing more scattering, which can indicate more uh, particles coming maybe from lower elevations, indicative of contaminant aerosol data, or also just larger particles. Um, same with humidity, kind of indicative of marine boundary layer, the average mean increases throughout the day. Uh, this graph right here is difficult to see, and I didn't change it <laughs> despite my uh, um, feedback from peers. This is difficult to see, but orange is saying upslope wind direction, and blue is saying downslope. So anytime the wind was dominant from those sectors I showed you on the first page, I, label, I, I categorized them either as upslope or downslope. And sure enough, during the middle part of the day, it seems that you have more upslope, as indicated by all the orange, uh, in the 8 to 6 p.m. range. And you have also tends to be more particles. Not enough information to tell you a lot, but it does say there are more particles present, suggesting that that trend does confirm what we know. Um, some of the other ones, like I mentioned, there was absorption and scattering. This one is an absorption based on wind direction. Uh, and if we look at this, you, again, you have a Cartesian plot in the outer circle of that far one is showing all the average data together. Uh, and you can see that, I would say, so here's like your, your spectrum of high coefficients or low coefficients based on how many particles are present and whether, or the size of the particles. And we were considering, you know, yellow or green, blue, as lower, so if you look at the fraction from the southeast quadrant, you tend to have a fraction that it has lower, or a fraction of those um, aerosols coming from that quadrant have a lower scattering coefficient, whereas the ones from maybe the upper tend to have a fraction that is a higher coefficient, um, indicating that if wind is coming from that area, there seems to be more scattering as a fraction compared to the rest uh, of the particles from that direction. Again, you can see hourly changes of the absorption. Um, the one that I th really thought was scattering, you really get to see uh, the big change, and you really see um, what I would say dirtier, uh, um, dirtier air, I guess you would say, from lower elevations. So if the upslope, let's say you have a fraction coefficient of 1 up to 5, and in some cases we saw some crazy uh, coefficients, but in the upslope, you really get to see that the fraction of high coefficients coming from that area is really great, whereas from especially the southeast quadrant, not so much. And we kind of have seen, as I mentioned on that first slide, that this wind coming from the southwest was kind of an upslope, and so we need to understand that a little bit better, what's going on. Um, it just wasn't in the scope of our research during this period. Does anyone have any questions? I also would like to thank, before I'm done, uh, Patrick Sheridan and the rest of the aerosols, Betsy Andrews, who's here today, uh, for all their help. And I just had a wonderful time. So do you guys have any questions so far? <laughs>